Welcome, YouTubers, to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In this video, there's going to be 16 practice test questions that should closely mirror what you should expect to see in the general science subtest of both the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB, as well as the pre-screening Internet Delivered Computer Adaptive Test, that is the PICAT. As a quick reminder, on the actual general science subtest of the ASVAB and PICAT, you'll have eight minutes to answer 16 questions. In other words, you have to move rather quickly through this subtest of the ASVAB. Additionally, I want to mention this. At most, you should spend a day or two preparing for this general science subtest of the ASVAB. In fact, here are the resources I recommend that you use, all of which are completely free. So on the Union Test Prep website, there's a free four-page study guide. I would strongly encourage you to read through that from start to finish. And of course, I'll put a link to that free study guide in the description of this video. After you finish reading that study guide on the Union Test Prep website, I would recommend that you go through my YouTube playlist for general science and take a look at the practice test questions in there. And truth be told, that's all I would do to prepare for this subtest of the ASVAB. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, I quickly want to mention this. In my opinion, you should not spend more than $30 on test prep for the ASVAB and PICAT in total. At most, I'd recommend that you buy a copy of a study guide like ASVAB for Dummies from Amazon or Barnes & Noble. The unfortunate reality nowadays is that many of the online tutors either do group tutoring, which enables them to earn a lot of money but is very ineffective for the individual, or two, are not American or are impersonating Americans, uh, which is a very common method that people in India use to scam Americans. So in other words, if someone's trying to charge you $500 for tutoring for the ASVAB, and it sounds like they may be from India, it's almost certainly a scam and you need to move on. Truth be told, as long as you spend a week to a month diligently preparing for the ASVAB and PICAT, you should have no problems passing it on your first try. And for that reason, I do not recommend that you spend too much on test prep at all. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with these practice test questions. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, if both parents of a child are carriers of a recessive allele for a disorder, what is the probability of their child getting it? So in this case, we're gonna use what's called a Punnett square to solve it. And of course you probably used a Punnett square at some point in your biology class. More specifically, I'm gonna put the dad over here and the mom over here. What's more, I'm gonna say that capital D means there's no disorder. Lowercase d means that the disorder is either recessive or present. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, so let's talk about genotypes. If someone has the genotype capital D, capital D, that means there's no presence of the disorder whatsoever in their genotype. If someone has the genotype capital D, lowercase d, that means they're a recessive carrier of the disorder. They don't have the disorder themselves, but they have the genes that can possibly cause someone to have that disorder. And if someone has the genotype lowercase d, lowercase d, that means they have the disorder. So they have it. Now let's go ahead and fill in the Punnett square here. Again, both the dad and mom are recessive carriers of this disorder. So they don't have the disorder, but they have the genes that can contribute to someone having it. So the dad's genotype is capital D, lowercase d. The mom's genotype is capital D, lowercase d. Let's fill in the Punnett square now. In this first box, we have big D, big D. This means that this person has no genes for this disorder whatsoever. In this second box, we have capital D from the dad, lowercase d from the mom. That means that this person is a recessive carrier of the disorder. In this third box, we get a capital D from the mom and a lowercase d from the dad. As I just said, this means that this person is a recessive carrier of this disorder. They don't have it, but they can contribute to someone else having it. And in this fourth and final box, the dad gives us a small d and the mom gives us a small d. This genotype means that the person has the disorder. And as you can see, this occurs in one out of the four boxes. One-fourth is the same thing as 25%. So this one is 
This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says the rate at which work is done is called, well, as it happens, the rate at which work is done is called power. Power is work divided by time, and work is measured in joules. So this one is going to be A, power. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, which branch of science deals with the study of earthquakes? So topography is about studying the surface features of land, including mountains and rivers, so that's not correct. Cartography is representing land on a map, so that's not correct. Physiology is the study of living organisms and their functions. And seismology is the study of earthquakes and seismic waves that move through and around the Earth. So this one is going to be C, seismology. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, in a balanced aquatic ecosystem, which of the following would have the greatest population? So in this case, we're going to look at a food chain for an aquatic ecosystem. At the very bottom of the food chain, you have the highest populations. Those are called your primary producers, and they're mostly plant life. So plankton, in other words, is going to have the greatest population. As you go up the food chain, the population uh, decreases respectively. So, for example, at the very top of the food chain, you have your top carnivores, such as sharks and dolphins. And, of course, their population is going to be the smallest. So this one is going to be D, plankton. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, which scale measures the acidity or alkalinity of a substance? Well, you should know that Celsius measures temperature, not acidity or alkalinity. Uh, that said, here's an example of a pH scale. 7 on the pH scale is considered neutral. That is, something is neither acidic nor uh, alkaline. And for example, water is considered to be neutral. If you go to the right on the pH scale, uh, things become more alkaline. So for example, soap is considered to be alkaline. If you go to the left on the pH scale, things are, become more acidic. So, for example, a battery, which is full of acid, has a pH of about 8. Uh, so this one is going to be A, the pH scale. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, according to their locations on the periodic table, argon and neon are. So you can see here's the periodic table. Here's group 18. We have neon and argon right here. These are what's called the noble gases. So this one is D. They're called noble gases because they're relatively inert and don't react with other chemical substances. So this one is D. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, which of the following is the primary force acting on a floating object? So Buoyancy is the ability or tendency to float in water or air or some other fluid. So this one is going to be B. Of course, you can see that the technical definition is down here. Again, buoyancy is technically the upward force exerted by a fluid that opposes the weight of an object in the fluid. Uh, the buoyant force F of B is equal to the density of the fluid P times the volume of the fluid displaced by the object V times G, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, you don't have to know this definition. Again, just know that buoyancy is the ability or tendency uh, to float in water or air. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, which of the following would more likely be involved in computing the wind stress on a building? So cryogenics is the study of extremely low temperatures typically below 150 degrees Celsius, which is 238 degrees Fahrenheit, so this doesn't apply. Thermodynamics is the science of the relationship between heat, work, temperature, and energy, so this doesn't apply. And electromagnetics is the field of physics that studies interactions between electric fields and magnetic fields, so this doesn't apply. So the correct answer is B, aerodynamics which is the study of how air flows around objects. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, which of the following undergoes metamorphosis? So the definition of metamorphosis is the transformation from an immature form to an adult form in two or more distinct stages. So when we think about a 
bear, for example, it goes from a bear cub to an adult without transforming itself dramatically. The same is true for birds as well as seals. That said, toads and frogs, for example, go through two or more distinct stages. So for example, they go from eggs to tadpoles. A tadpole is very distinct from a froglet in that this has legs. And then a froglet is very distinct from a frog. So this one is gonna be uh, bee toads. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PyCat says, which of the following is caused by pathogenic bacteria? So uh, when we feel sick, uh, it's usually caused by either a bacterial or a viral infection. Uh, but let's take a look at our answer choices here. Stroke is a physiological uh, reaction to blood flow being interrupted to the brain. So this is physiological. Influenza is a viral infection, not a bacterial one. Uh, the common cold, likewise, is a viral infection. That is to say it's a virus. So that's not correct. So in this case, tuberculosis is a sickness that is caused by a bacterial infection. So this one is going to be C. This ASVAB podcast general science practice test question says, what is another name for the chemical formula NaCl? So this is sodium chloride, otherwise known as B salt. Uh, this is rock salt right here called halite. And how do we get table salt? Well, this halite is mined from the earth, and then this rock salt is uh, made into granules, which we call table salt. So again, this is uh, sodium chloride, otherwise known as B salt. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, which of the following is a type of contact force? So if you look closely, you should see that gravity electrical and magnetism are all examples of non-contact forces, which involves a force between objects not touching. So if, for example, magnetic forces can happen when magnets are close but not touching, whereas friction is a contact force. And more specifically, friction is defined as a resistive force caused by two surfaces sliding across each other. What's more, you have to know that Friction always acts in the opposite direction of motion. So this one is going to be A. As Fab PyCat General Science practice test question says, what is the correct order of the water cycle? So the water cycle always starts with a pool of water being heated up. Uh, number one here for A and B says water vapor cools. That is not correct. So we can go ahead and eliminate both of those. Uh, number two says precipitation occurs. Precipitation occurs later in the water cycle, so we know that's not correct. And by process of elimination, we know D is correct. Again, sunlight heats up pond water, it evaporates, and then it cools and condenses, uh, and then uh, we have precipitation. So this one is D53142. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, which of these is part of the structure of DNA? So DNA is broken down into parts called nucleotides. There's actually four of them. A is always going to pair with T, and G is always going to pair with C. A, of course, stands for adenine. T stands for thymine. Uh, G stands for guanine. And C stands for cytosine. We look through our answer choices. Only one of them is there, notably D, guanine. So again, for this one, remember uh, that DNA is broken down into nucleotides, A, T, uh, G, and C. This ASVAB PICAT general science practice test question says, what is the symbol for a hydroxyl ion? Thankfully enough, these uh, chemical names usually tell you what compounds are in them. In this case, we have one hydrogen and one oxygen compound. And if we look through our answer choices, we can see that this just has hydrogen. This has oxygen and hydrogen. This one has two hydrogens, and this one has three hydrogens. So the correct answer to this one is B. This general science practice test question for the ASVAB and PICAT says, if both parents of a child have brown eyes but are carriers of a recessive allele for blue eyes, what is the probability of their child having brown eyes? So I'm going to say big B represents brown eyes, and little b represents blue eyes. 
uh, since blue eyes is a recessive allele, for their child to have blue eyes, they would have to have the genotype B, B, little b, little b. And we're going to use a Punnett square to quickly figure this one out. Again, according to the problem, uh, the, both parents have brown eyes but are carriers of the recessive allele for blue eyes. So their genotype, in other words, looks like this. Brown eyes, big B, but they carry the allele for blue eyes, so that's going to be little b accordingly. So I'm going to put the mom across the top and the dad across the side. Again, their genotype is the same. So it's gonna be big B here, little b here, big B here, little b here. Let's fill this in accordingly. Here we have big B, big B. So this offspring would have brown eyes and they would be a carrier for brown eyes. Uh, in this box here, we have big B from the dad, little b from the mom. So this offspring would have brown eyes, but they're a recessive carrier of the allele for blue eyes. Uh, in this box, we have big B from the mom, little b from the dad. So this offspring would have uh, brown eyes, but again, they're a recessive carrier of the allele for blue eyes. And in this box, we get a little b from the mom and a little b from the dad. So this offspring would have blue eyes and they're a recessive carrier of the allele for blue eyes. So in Three out of the four boxes, the offspring would have uh, brown eyes. Three out of four is the same thing as 75%. So to answer this one, the probability of their child having brown eyes is B, 75%.